I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather's clear, can do, can Welcome do. Welcome back to my channel on Vegas Stories. Now, for anybody who doesn't understand the stories, because I've covered so many of them, these stories I created for these videos have encompassed my 45 plus years here in the city of Las Vegas. My work experience primarily was involved with two licensed Nevada racebook disseminators, okay, licensed by the Nevada State Gaming Board, provide information, you know, from the racetracks to the racebook so they can operate and maintain their particular situation. They're required by law, you know. So that's a, the bulk of my stories. I also have stories that involve sports betting because back in the day I worked for the Sports Forum newspaper as well. And they had, a, they had a weekly tablet called the Sports Forum. You know, I was a college football handicapper. You know, obviously, I did some college football conversations on radio shows and all that kind of crap. So that's, you know, that's the essence. I deviate. I deviate a lot because I've been here such a long time. You know, the, the jobs just don't cover all the stories. I got other stories, too. So that gives you a little background on the video, okay? Push it aside. Let's get to my beer of the day. Now, surprisingly, I got a King Daddy. So remember what I told you about King Daddies, okay? I'm looking for high alcohol content in my beers, okay? The higher the alcohol content, I achieve my buzz without the bloat. That's my whole goal, okay? Because at my age, I don't want to keep drinking a lot of beer in order to get a buzz. I don't need that shit anymore, okay? So a lot of the beers that I'm used to, that I grew up with as a kid, eh, the low alcohol, they're not going to do it. You drink too much. You know, I don't want to do that shit anymore. So I started exploring the international you know, beer market, and you know, needless to say, the country of Belgium, a lot of frickin' beers, I mean, they have beers like you can't believe, and every one's like high alcohol content, but I got a King Daddy, I finally got another King Daddy, another 10%, I believe it's just 10%, yeah, 10% alcohol, now take a look at this, because this is like a winter beer, okay, this was created, believe it or not, this beer was created in 1982, which is kind of like, you know, a little synergies here, because the story I'm going to tell you right after this is a 1982 story, so we're going to go into the same area, we're going to drink a beer, okay, tell you a story during the same freaking period of time, you don't get that too often, and here it is, I'm going to show it to you, it, now let me tell you, I looked on the, uh, how to pronounce this thing on YouTube, you know, they're saying shoof, they say shoof, okay, nice Shoof, okay? Now, the last time I kind of did a beer from this place, you know, I called it Shoufé. I like the Shoufé thing. I think it's got a little attractiveness to the lingo, you know, kind of stuff. But, you know, everybody's saying Shoof. Either way, this is a great beer. I was told, you know, the best time to drink this beer, I don't know why, mid-October, mid-February, by a fireplace. I don't know why. They just said it's a good time to drink this beer. Like, you need a freaking reason to drink a beer. I mean, I'm drinking beers in the middle of the winter outside, you know what I mean? It doesn't really matter, but you know, if you want to drink this beer near a fireplace, eh, you're going to fit what the hell they're talking about. So this is a King Daddy. Enjoy it. Remember now, one should do the trick, especially if you're not a big beer drinker, okay? For me, I get a little bit of the buzz on one of these, okay? So the point is, is that you want to go easy with this stuff, because if you stop packing these things down, you're going to be a big, big trouble with this. So take it easy. Enjoy it. Don't you like the elves on the I mean, look at this place. This is nice. Look at the bottle, how pretty it is. Can't wait to try it. Now, what's interesting, too, about this beer, it says, it says uh, it's got uh, spices in here. It's got orange peel, and it has uh, thyme. I mean... Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's got a little bit of everything. It's got herbs. It's got spices. I mean, you no, know, not, not only are you going to get drunk, but you're going to take a little tour through the garden, so to say. You know, nice thing. So just put it aside. Let's get to my story of the day. So as I said, I'm going to give you a story that takes me all the way back to 1982, okay, when that beer was created. So this is important to remember because what was happening during this particular time, once again, I gave you stories about the Kentucky Derby. This was another Kentucky Derby that I went to. So I had to go with my boy Chuck, Chucky Duraco, the owner of the Sports Forum, Las Vegas, you know, and also the owner of Winco, Wagering Information Network Company, which happened to be the licensed Nevada disseminator. So he had the newspaper and he had the dissemination company. And the bottom line is, is we're going to another derby. I mean, it's another treat. We're going to go to Kentucky Derby again. You know what I mean? So I'm all excited. Although I did tell you a little story about the one in 1980. I had to work a little bit. I got a little dirty, real drunk at that particular. I got fucking bombed on that scenario. So let's not get into that right now. We're going to tell you about the 82 Derby because it's a little unusual. 
So what happened is that the, the, the race was great. We had a great time. Everything was fabulous. But the story's going to take place after the Kentucky Derby. So as far as the Derby's concerned, had a great time, stayed at the Galt House, ate great food, went to the Derby, enjoyed the whole goddamn thing. Goddle del Sol won the race at, I mean, like 21 to 1 freaking shot, paid like $45 for a fucking $2 bet. What a great horse, you know? So the thing is, it was a great derby. A long shot came in. And the thing is, a lot of people that won on the particular race, they were like, you know, they're all excited and shit like that. But you have to understand, when we went to Kentucky at this particular time, okay, my boy Chucky was preparing. We were going to leave on a Monday. The race is on a Saturday, May 1st. I mean, it's a great day. You know, you go to the derby, it's a great day. But on the, on the Monday, we're going to go back to Las Vegas. But I'm going to give you a little scenario of what transpired because it's a little kind of chaotic. I mean, my boy Chuck, this is what he does. He's an, I told you about this guy. I'm going to get a little more into detail on the kind of like luck this guy has because he was like uncanny with this shit. Okay. I mean, what he did at that time, okay, fuck, I didn't have the balls to do, but he was amazing because he didn't care. He did whatever the hell he wanted to. But in this particular situation, okay, he must have had a bad day because, you know, we got up on a Sunday morning. And we, I guess he had a bad night. I don't know what happened. I know he didn't. I, I know he didn't win at the races. I know he got beat there. I think he might have had a little bit of a bet on something else. You know, back in fucking Vegas, he got, you know he's got contacts there. Who knows? He might have bet a football game or not a football. It's got to be baseball season. But whatever it is, he, he had a bad Sunday morning. So he looked at me and he says, "Pack your freaking bags. We're out of here." I said, "Chuck, what do you mean we're out of here?" He said, "We're out of here. We're just getting. We're going home. And we're, going, we're leaving a day early." I said, really? We're going to go early? All right, all right, yeah. So I packed the bags. We're, you know, we're going to go to the airport. I don't know what the fuck's going on because, you know, tickets we got there for tomorrow, right? So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm going along for the ride. I mean, we had a good time. He wants to leave a day early. We'll leave a day early. What am I going to do? I can't get, argue with the guy because, you know, he paid for everything. So needless to say, we're having a conversation on the way, you know, and we get in the car and he's about to take off. Now we're in the garage at the Gold House. This is amazing. So he's got to rent a car, you know, and, you know, I mean, he got, and he's driving the car like a little bit of a maniac in the freaking goddamn garage, you know, which was a little shocking because you know, Chuck is, I mean, I, I told you he's a heavy guy, you know, and so obviously he was pissed off and, you know, and he's freaking really, you know, driving like a maniac in the garage. And I, you know, we came to a little area and there was like a traffic line in the garage to get out. Well, you know, he didn't really like that scenario. So he wanted to like go through another area. But the thing is, is the, the, the beams that were like freaking in the garage, you know, they were kind of close together. You know, he had a car that was a little wide. I told you he's a big guy. It was a wide car, you know. And as we're driving to this particular area, you know, to get in another area to get out of the line, so to say, you know, he's going to go through this particular situation. And I told him, I said, Chuck, I'm telling you right now, the car's not fitting through that. And he said to me, he says, fuck this. And he just hit the gas pedal and he went right through. Now, he created a couple of deep scratches on both sides of the car, almost to the point where it looked like we had racing stripes. You know, it looked like a freaking, you know, like a racing car. He had stripes nice and even all the way down the side of the car. He scraped it. Went in a little narrow situation. It wasn't big enough. I told him that. I gave him the freaking goddamn information. Didn't listen. Told you he was pissed off. He just drove the car right through. He damaged the car. You know, I mean, it wasn't bad, but it definitely had some freaking scratches all over it. Because, you know, that's what happens when you try to squeeze something through a tight hole. You know what I'm saying? So all of a sudden, he's driving. I said, Chuck, what are we going to do? We don't have tickets. Don't worry about that. I said, what do you mean don't worry about that? He said, don't worry about that. You worry too much. I said, Chuck, I'm trying to tell you, we don't have the tickets, plus we got to get the car back. What are you going to tell the fucking guy about the scratches? He said, we're not going to the frickin' rent a car. So what are you going to do? I said, you got to throw the car in the river? He said, no, no, we're going to leave it at the airport. You're going to leave it at the airport? He said, yeah, we're going to leave it at the airport. I said, what the fuck? I said, don't you want to bring the car back? And, you know, and he, no, no, I'm going to bring the car back. He said, keep it at the airport. They'll come get it. So, you know, needless to say, he we drive up to the airport in Kentucky and Louisville and all of a sudden he parks the car right in the freaking goddamn where the bags are being dumped off. You know, now understand, you got to understand, this is prior 9 11 This is 1982. This isn't 9-11. There's no fucking security back then. They don't give a shit about anything. We pull up. We park the car. 
we take our bags out, we check our bags in, you know, all of a sudden he says, no, we're not, we're going to take the bags, we're not even going to check them in, so basically what we did is we carried the bags, it was going to be carry on, I mean, it's just fucking amazing, because I think they were a little too big, but he didn't give a shit, he wanted to go on the freaking plane early, I don't know how we're going to do this, because the tickets we had were for tomorrow, and the point is, is it was the same particular time and flight, a day earlier, you know, coming back to Vegas. And so all of a sudden, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm laughing myself. I said, I'm going to get fucked on this thing. This guy's going to try to board a plane. He's got the wrong day. I mean, this is amazing, you know. And then the other thing I'm looking at, you know, I'm tapping a look at the clock and I'm saying, Chuck, I'm going to tell you, the plane's leaving in like in 10 minutes. we got a long way to walk. I don't know if they're going to make the plane. He said, don't worry. You're worrying too much. So, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to help the guy out. I knew he was having a bad day, but I didn't know. I mean, I don't know what the frick to do. You know, all of a sudden, he looks at me and says, just, just walk. Just walk ahead. I'll take my time. Just walk ahead. Make sure you get on the frickin' plane. I said, Chuck, what do I do? He says, just give them a ticket. Get on the frickin' plane. I said, Jesus Christ, it's not even the right frickin' ticket for the right day. He said, don't worry about that. I told you, you're panicking all the time. So, you know, we're strolling up to the gate. You know, I mean, we got to everything. We're up to the gate. We got these tickets for tomorrow, but it doesn't matter. You know, all of a sudden. So I'm looking. All of a sudden, you, you go up to the gate, you know, and all of a sudden, there's the stewardess. I mean, the lady's over there and the guy's over there. And all of a sudden, they're looking at us and they were shutting the door. I told you we're real close to when the plane had to take off. And, and, and the lady starts waving like this. Come on, come on. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I mean, I don't even, do. they don't even know we're coming. I mean, how do they do this? All of a sudden, I walk on a plane and I had my ticket because Chuck gave me the ticket. I gave the lady the ticket. The lady just grabbed the ticket. She put it with the other ticket. She says, get on the plane, hurry up. Come on, let's go. We got to go, we got to go. And so all of a sudden, Chucky's walking real slow. Then he's kind of coming up to the plane and all of a sudden he walks through the gate of the door, you know, gets in the plane, and the door just closes right behind him. That was it. So now I'm on the plane with him. I look at him. I said, Chuck, what the fuck? I mean, the plane's packed. He said, just walk. Just walk. So, I mean, they shut the gate. Did they know? They were caught? Did they know? All of a sudden, we walked down, and sure enough, there's two freaking seats. Two seats that are open of the whole plane. We just sat down in them. I mean, what the hell is this? You know what I'm coming from on this situation? Wrong plane. We get up there. They wave us on. Then they shut the door. And there's two freaking seats. I mean, I thought he was going to get screwed on this scenario. No, it's Chuck. I told you he's like Mr. Magoo. Back in the day, Mr. Magoo. This is classic Magoo. He walks on, you know, door shuts, walks up. All of a sudden, there's his freaking seats. Not even on the right plane. He's not even on the right plane. He still got in. This is freaking amazing. So all of a sudden, we're taking a flight back. I couldn't believe this happened because I got a feeling two people got fucked real bad on this scenario because they probably were running their ass off to get up to the gate and they thought we were the two people. So, I mean, that's what happens. I mean, you know, they, they're probably up there. Where the fuck is the plane? The plane's gone. I mean, it's gone. It, they left. They, I thought you were on the gate. No, nah, they all did. They just took off. We took off with the plane. So Chucky boy's on a plane. We're going back. He said, you got to do me a little favor. I said, hey, oh, here we go again. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, we get back, home. We get back to the office. You know, yeah, you know, it's Sunday, but I want you to call the rent-a-car agency. I said, well, what do you want me He said, tell them the fucking car's at the airport. I said, what about the damage? Said, Don't fucking say that. What's your problem? Why would you tell them that? I said, well, the car's damaged. Don't tell them that. I said, oh, Jesus Christ, Really? Well, needless to say, I get into Vegas eventually, you know, I got to call this rent-a-car. This is my job. I got to call this crap. It's got damage. It's left at the airport. I think, you know, the keys were in the front seat, whatever the hell he did, you know. So I get, in, I get on the car. I get on the phone with this particular car agency, and I'm on the phone. And I say, oh, by the way, I, I just want to let you know. And I gave them all the information, you know, and, and sure enough, they got back on the phone. They said, no problem. We got the car. I said, what do you mean you got the car? He says, well, we knew that we, the car was at the thing, and they got a call from the airport, and we came and got the car. The car's all right. I said, really? You got the car back? He said, yeah, we got it back. So I, I'm trying to, I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for him to tell me, you know, what the fuck's all the damage on the car? Never said anything. Never said anything. Not one freaking thing about the damage in the car. So I'm on the phone. I'm waiting for the goddamn, you know, for the shoe to fall. And, and the guy don't say shit. So you know, I don't offer it. So needless to say, I just hang up the phone. I walk in. I tell Chuck. I said, Chuck. It's amazing. I said, they took the car. They, they took it back to the, to the agency. They, they never said anything about the damage. He said, I told you. 
I told you they don't make shit out of that stuff. He said, Chuck, that doesn't even make any goddamn sense. What are you talking about? They don't, they, I'm telling you right now, they won't tell you anything about that. We won't even know about it. I said, how do you know this shit? He goes, I'm, I, I, he just looked at me, he nodded, he got a little shitty smile on his face. And I'm thinking to myself, this fucking guy, he's got some freaking luck. You know what I mean? I mean, if that was my car and I damaged it, they would have probably put cuffs on me, threw me in a fucking goddamn jail and I'd get bailed out or something like that. This guy damages the car. He walks up to the freaking airport, just walks in, the plane takes off, two other people get screwed, and the car is totally damaged. So the point is, is that everything worked out to perfection, no problem. He did it again. He pulls the rabbit out of the hat. So many of these freaking stories I told you about, it never changes with this guy. He's got a little bit of magic, got a little bit of luck, you know. And I'm just walking around shaking my head, wondering, wondering when the hell is he going to get fucking caught on this crap? But he never does. He's got that particular pizzazz about him. No matter what the hell he does, he never gets caught. And he just keeps doing it because he never gets caught. I don't know why he doesn't get caught, but he never gets caught. Just phenomenal. So I thought you would like this story because, you know, as I said, this guy has got magic about it. And everything he did on a daily basis was something different. So I thought you would really like this particular story because it tells you, even when he's having a bad day, when he's pissed off at everything, okay, at the end of the day, what happens? Gets on the wrong plane, comes back to Vegas, damages the freaking rental car, nobody says a damn thing about it. Okay, leaves it at the airport, doesn't even have to bring it back. I mean, who the frick does this kind of shit? This is pretty decent. I mean, this guy's amazing, okay? So once again, I thought you would like this story. If you did, hit the like button, okay? Subscribe, you get all the videos all at once. You can pick and choose. That's a nice thing. I'm working real hard. I'm trying to pick up subscribers. I'm talking to a lot of people. I'm embracing people. I'm telling them about, you know... You know, YouTube, Bob Moretti, Vegas stories kind of shit. People ask me what it's about. I tell them it's a lot of shit. Everything you I mean, you're going to like it. I, so the thing is, I'm really working at this thing. I'm trying to get subscribers. But, you know, if you subscribe, it's a great thing. You're in my backyard. Give you a big hug. So once again, take care. Enjoy your life. Come back again. Got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather's clear, can do, can do.